Hello, thanks for joining me again. This is DMAC, and today I'm looking at this little bastard of a lock. Um, I, I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was, uh, as I do periodically, I was picking through uh, this particular box, which just has all sort of rims and mortise cylinders in it, various different types, and this one was in it. Um, and I was just, it was just a sort of practice session, really. Um, a lot of these they're not sort of too challenging five pin uh, locks and, and that sort of thing um, fairly easy to sort of get through um, and it, they're, they're sort of like uh, many of those are kind of confidence booster locks uh, and this was this was in there I got this in a job lot of locks um, quite a few months ago and I remember I sort of I picked through all of those locks and then they ended up in my practice boxes um, I remember this one being particularly difficult um, and then I just tossed it in the box and, and kind of didn't really come back to it again until uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, as I, so I was just going through uh, those rim cylinders, um, you know, picking this one, picking that one, picking the other one. I came to this one, I couldn't pick it um, and I couldn't really figure it out. Um, and I probably spent about half an hour on it and I still couldn't pick it. Um, and it started really bothering me. So I decided I'd just concentrate on this one until I got it. And that was two weeks ago. Now, on and off, I've been playing with this one and I've not been able to get him open. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out why, because on paper, it's one of those locks that should be fairly easy. I mean, this is, as you can see, it's a five pin uh, lock, uh, five pin core in there. Um, it's unbranded, it's, it's engraved. So it's been engraved Keymaster Security with a phone number on it there. Um, but I'm going to assume that this is uh, just a sort of cheapo lock and this company um, at some point got a job lot of them in and popped them in the engraver and I assume it was cheap because it's because it's unbranded um, and they would have bought them in unbranded again this is all assumptions uh, engraved them with their own uh, name and number uh, so that the customer hopefully would come back to them if there was any problems um, so it's not a, a high security lock it's not something that should have given me the amount of trouble that this lock has given me uh, and there are a few reasons for that. I, I haven't opened him up, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what's inside if I can get him picked today. Um, I think it's just one of those locks where um, it's not designed with high tolerances, but it, perhaps it's just it's just got them or it's got like the perfect mix um, of pins and uh, tolerances between the pins and the chambers that just make it a really difficult pick. Um, there are definitely spools in there. I do get a uh, counter rotation when I pick it. Um, pin one always uh, drops um, and that can make it difficult. I found it difficult for other reasons because um, getting a tensioner to fit in the top was uh, pretty tricky. In the end I made one of my bicycle spoke tensioners um, and give it quite a fat tip and that meant that I could it was a really, really tight fit in there, and I can almost sort of float pick this. Not that I'm any good at float picking, but uh, my best version of float picking uh, to help me defeat it because I think it's got spools and a standard. Um, pin one, you set that and you go into a, a, deep, uh, a full set, and then when you hit pin two, pin one drops down, uh, and then you have to reset pin one. And in resetting pin one, it, pin two can quite easily drop again and that goes through all of the lock you if you set pin two um, and then you move on to pin three when you set pin three pin one will drop down and in that case pin two will probably drop down as well and you end up chasing your towel and just going round and round in circles it's an absolute pain in the ass um, but I think I finally got it figured out and I just wanted to uh, pick it on video and uh, we can open it up together and see what is inside um, my approach to it is very heavy tension um, and when I'm getting those four sets, um, uh, I'm just lifting those spools up very quickly. I found if I lifted, lifted them up slow and almost tried to float pick uh, as I did it, uh, the other pins would always drop down. And, and that, that was what I was doing. I was constantly chasing my towel in that loop. If you sort of snap them up really quickly, uh, it seems to, seems to work. So I've got a fairly sturdy pick. Uh, this one here, and that should and that should help me do it. Um, and then hopefully we can have a look inside and see what's there. I did um, I did search on Google because I was really intrigued um, as to the sort of uh, background of the of the lock and this company. Um, that's, that's a London number. It's an old London number, an old London code. 
and I did find Keymaster Security. They were in Bethnal Green in London and it says on Google that they're out of business. Um, maybe that's because they always used high security locks as their standard locks, I don't know. But um, either way, it's a very difficult pick and uh, one that's certainly on paper. Uh, shouldn't be, but it is. Anyway, enough waffling on. Let's cap in the vice and see if we can get him picked. I'm gonna have a quick peek inside and uh, find out what has been giving me trouble for the past few weeks. Let's get a nice fit in the vice. I don't have a key for this one either, so um, zoom you in. Yeah, I don't have a key for it, so that makes it all the more frustrating to find out uh, what's inside. Okay. So we'll get him in the top. Pin one always binds first. I do know the binding order for this one because I've spent so long on it. Okay. So pin one's really high as well. So we've got a little full set there. I just realized um, I've got this mark on the other side and you can't see it there. So let's put another mark on this side so you can just see what that core's doing. Okay. A bit better. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see if we can get it picked or whether it will be camera shy. Alright, heavy tension. That's pin one and we've got to do the full set there. On to pin two. He's set, one didn't drop down, three, counter rotation, and now one, two dropped down, but I managed to pop him back up, and now one's dropped down, pop him back up, back into the full set. So one, two, and three are set, we're on four now, counter rotation, quick pop, there we go, and we dropped one again, so we'll set one, back into the full set, one, two drop down, three drop down as well, okay, one, two, three, four, I don't feel something else dropped then, it's really high set as well, that pin one, back in the full set, Three, four, I think. Pin one drop down again. One, two drop down again. That's two. And that's it. One was wasn't quite set, so one is set now. I think it's just pin five. Counter rotation on five. I set five, but something else has dropped down. I think we're back to the beginning here pretty much. All of them have dropped back down again. Right, I think we're on the last pin again. One, oh no, two have dropped down, two have dropped down again. As has one. And there's me thinking that this will behave for the camera and I'd make it look too easy. No danger of that with this lock, I tell you. Yeah, I think we're back to the beginning with this one. Right, let's try again. One. Almost like they're, they're, they're it's got like tapered pins in it or something like that. It is an absolute pain in the ass this lock. All right, I think we're on five now. If I can set this without anything dropping, then we're all good. Two, three. 
yeah, just pin five. And one, <laughs> one drop down again, two's drop down again. I'm really interested to see what's inside this. No, I've lost it again. Really interested to see what's inside it and uh, why it's so difficult. I, I suspect that I'm not going to find anything interesting in it at all. Um, and it's just one of those anomalies. One, two, three. One's dropped down again. Two, three, four. One's dropped down again. Okay, one, two, three, back to one, two, yeah, I'm just going round and round in circles at the moment. And because one's so high set, it's really not easy. Okay, what are we on now? One. Two's drop down again, one's drop down again. Oh, there we go, we are open. I was getting to the point there where I was about to give up. Um, and throw the lock out the window or something <laughs> and scrap this video. Right, I'm going to see what's inside this. See what's been giving me all of this trouble for weeks. I mean, I've been picking this on and off for a couple of weeks and it's taken uh, that long to get in a position where I understand it um, enough to pick it on video. And you start, <laughs> you start kind of losing confidence in your picking abilities. Um, I mean, I'm in my, I've got a naughty bucket with lots of unpicked locks, but a lot of those are locks that are above my current level. Um, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a purple belt on the, the Reddit belt system, not that I'm officially graded, but they're the locks that I'm normally picking and um, purple belt and above. And I can understand it if it adds sidebars or as a medico or something like that, but this, I suspect, is just a bog standard uh, lock with nothing interesting in it. But um, hopefully we will find out together. Maybe I'll be proved wrong and the key master security uh, will be redeemed. Right, I think I might have just bricked this. There we go, nice gutting disaster as well. There's a little tab, I'll show you it, um, at the back, and that's what we caught on. That's just my haste in, <laughs> in gutting it. We've got all the key pins there. I'll just organise these. One sec, just bear with me. So we have spool, 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 spool. Another spool there, and that I think is pin one. So just looking at the bit in on this, uh, yeah, three and four are oh, low sets, and we've got a higher set at the back. There's no counter milling, nothing in there. Standard, 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 standard. Yeah. Nothing, nothing in there to give me uh, any sort of worry. There's no crazy security features in this core. It is just a bog standard, unbranded, uh, cheap core by the look of it. And um, we'll have a quick look at these pins. So we've got these spools in there. They're reasonable spools. Um, they're pretty good, but they're not tapered or there's no reason for them to constantly drop uh, in. And in pin, pin one, it's not a standard, it's um, 
I think it's a serrated. Let's just hold it up for you so you can see it. There you go. So it's like a a serrated, it's not a barrel pin, it's not tapered, um, but it kind of behaves as if it is. And there we go. I'm 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 not baffled because that's kind of what I expected. I'm, my assumptions about it being a cheap lock um, are, are kind of justified now, I think. But it's just one of those anomalies. There's nothing in there that should have caused uh, at the level I'm picking currently. There's nothing in there that should have caused me any particular problems. Certainly not the amount of problems that this lock's given me. Um, as you watch me open it there, I obviously struggled a little bit with it on camera, going round and round in circles. But I've been doing that for weeks on and off. I've spent I've spent hours on this lock. I have various different picks, different tensioners, different approaches, and the more I tried to pick it, the more frustrated I get, and the more I didn't want to get beaten by it. But um, it's defeated now. I've seen what's inside it. Uh, there's nothing there that's uh, yeah uh, particularly difficult. But it's just I think it's just one of those locks that um, humbles you. You know, you, you you make assumptions about locks that you know you'll be able to defeat them. There's nothing. Uh, too difficult about it and a little lock like this comes along and um, takes can take away that confidence if you're not careful um, but I'm glad I worked at it glad I looked inside and uh, yeah realized that there's nothing uh, nothing horrible in there but yeah perfect little lock and hats off to Keymaster Security if I don't think I don't think don't think they're still about um, but yeah this is a really tough lock and uh, yeah, you did really well if you had one of these in your front door back in the day. No one would be picking it in any hurry, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll leave a little link up there to subscribe. Uh, I think when I looked on YouTube analytics recently, uh, over 50% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So, yeah, if you hit that little uh, subscribe button, that'd be appreciated. I'll do more videos in the future. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and bye for now.